My name is Greg Leibach. I am president of the student body government at Gallaudet University. And last March, his victory in getting a deaf president for Gallaudet was sent a message to the world. And the focus was on what deaf people can do and not what they cannot do. And very often discrimination appears on a daily basis in our lives. We face that all the time, every day. We have many experiences of being turned down for jobs, denied promotions. For example, my own deaf brother, he had to hire and pay for an interpreter himself so he could interview for a job. And I've been denied medical treatment because doctors misunderstood us and couldn't communicate with us. They refused to hire a qualified interpreter. We have tried contacting police stations very often, but often they don't know how to use TTYs or they don't have it in their stations. In the past, we felt that there's nothing that we could do, that we had to accept this fate. And that was, those were just false excuses and discrimination. And we put up with this for a very long time. And last March showed that our tolerance and patience has run out. And I said last March that we wanted a deaf president, and we got one. President King's appointment shows that deaf people are capable of holding a responsible job and leading us. He's already proven his success in the past six months. Now we want our civil rights. Americans with the Disabilities Act would give us the legal tools to fight discrimination. Legal rights for women and minorities have already been brought to bear, and now it is time to remove communication barriers and provide reasonable accommodations. For example, captions, TTYs, qualified interpreters, note takers, and visual aids, and these type of things would reduce the communication barriers that we face. It's not simply just accommodations, but we would like to participate equally and to be effective in society, not to be ignored. We don't want sympathy, we want support. Until early last year, my family and I had an average life near one of America's thousands of average small country towns. We juggled our job, our daughter, and their credit card payments. Our pleasures were simple and common. A walk in the woods, a new song on the radio, or a cookout with other young families. But then my life changed dramatically. While delivering our healthy son, I suffered serious complications, including cardiac arrest and a stroke. Because of massive hemorrhaging, I received numerous transfusions of blood products. One unit was later found HIV positive, and in March of 1987, my own blood first tested positive for antibodies to the HIV virus, the virus that causes AIDS. The average life I once enjoyed has vanished, and since I've been living with HIV, I've learned a terrible truth about America, that it's not a good place to be different or to be ill, in spite of what we teach in government class. Uh, a woman in another part of Kentucky had managed a school cafeteria for a number of years. Her adult son, who was living in California, became ill with AIDS. The woman went to California to bring her son home so she could care for him. But when she returned, she was abruptly fired from her job. Apparently, even the perception that you're associated somehow with HIV whether or not you have it is grounds for ill treatment. This has to change. We need a law that will protect all people, even those perceived to be infected, simply because they are helping those who are ill. 
A man passing through a central Kentucky town was stopped for drunk driving. After he told the arresting officers that he had AIDS, the man's car was driven to a parking lot of the jail. Instead of putting the man in jail, the officers locked him inside his car to spend the night. The car was eventually surrounded by sightseers, staring and pointing at the man. Living with HIV is particularly stressful for people in America's small towns and rural communities. Straight fair and equitable treatment, legislation like this is essential. When I meet new people, I wish they would talk to me first before they ask what's wrong with me or what happened to me. It makes me feel like my wheelchair is more important than I am. I guess I'm luckier than a lot of other kids be with disabilities. I work as an actor. My movie Mac and Me is out right now. Maybe you've seen it. I like it because it shows that kids with disabilities aren't any different and can do the same things as other kids with, without disabilities. If given, a if given a chance, it's the first movie to star a kid with a disability. And it's a great family film full of adventure, full of adventures. Even got to do some of my own stunts. I also think Mac and Me is terrific because it shows a kid with a disability giving help instead of just getting help and nobody tries to cure him, cure me, or take away my disability by the end of the movie. Aside from acting in my wheelchair, I've won 5K and 10K races. After my mom and I go jogging on the beach back in California, we sometimes take the bus back home, or at least we try to. Most of the buses don't have lifts on them. So some of them, some of the drivers are very rude and get mad if I want to take the bus. Can you believe that? I work and part of my taxes pay for public buses and then they get mad at me, get mad just because I'm using a wheelchair. I don't think that's fair or right. I'm important too. If I really have to, I could, get, uh, I could get out of my wheelchair and climb up the stairs. But I don't think that, I, I don't think I should have to. Maybe another person using a wheelchair is trying to go to work or school and they shouldn't have to crawl up the stairs and, dir get, and get dirty. Some, wait, or or maybe they can't even get out of their wheelchair by themselves. 